Air, raced on ground, described officially as good. Good to soft in places for the first of three days of the Western Festival meeting. There was drama before the first race when the well-backed favourite, New Springs, took an age to get in the stalls. Even money sent off. Commentary at air was from Ian Barlett. They're off. They get away with the six furlongs in front of them and Libra Teller is a little bit slow to go from store number seven. New Springs in the red jacket, one of the first ones to show. So is she is towards the right in the green jacket. Joe the Taxi, the blue colours and against the rails on the left, the black and pink. Macho's Magic is probably just the leader. Granny Ann behind these, some shadow catcher nose banded towards the left. Ted's brother's up there as well. Further back to another citizen. Libra Teller's outpaced in the early part of the race. Halfway coming up now, and Macho's Magic in front going OK. The Red Jacket, New Springs, favourites ridden along in second. So is she on the right. Green Jacket trying to get there. Ted's brother's in behind this. Weakening then comes Jola Taxi. Another citizen in the very light blue is making headway. And it's still, though, Macho's Magic who shows in front as they head down to the furlong pole. Another citizen, the light blue, begins to make good progress towards towards the stand side rails and it's another citizen and David Allen who've come to take it up now to Macho's Magic as they race towards the line. Another citizen is only narrowly in front but is going to win. Macho's Magic in second place. Behind those will be a very tight thing for third. Shadow Catcher was catching everything at the end and flash pass with Ted's brother. Another citizen, David Allen, 18 to 1. Macho's Magic, 9 to 2. Second, Shadow Catcher, third, 33 to 1. And all nine ran. And with favourite New Springs clearly blowing her chance before the start, second favourite, so is she running disappointingly. It's hard to know what to make of this, but uh, no doubting another citizen has stepped up on two previous efforts. Uh, the runner up, uh, Macho's Magic, was certainly in control for a long way and a drop back might suit and the third shadow catcher came from miles back to snatch that position on the line next up was a competitive five furlong sprint mango music headed the market at seven to two they're off they get away pretty well, although Distant Sun appeared to be hampered coming out of the gates as they uh, split now into two groups with Ridley Diddley going over the far side with Wicked Wilma. Dispol Kyle has gone with that group as well. And also Burnwin Boy over there from Arig. Monty Mayer wants in company with those. Blown it is in that group as well. So is the Pink Jacket of Six Wives and Distant Sun is following those. Bravely and on the near side, Mango Music in the yellow caps, the leader here. D Solis with these. Pelman is them just in behind. On the right of the group towards the stand side is Sandwit with the yellow cap. Rosse Dancer and your boy sir just in behind this. Already they're coming down towards the last furlong. On the far side Wicked Wilma and Ridley Dilly there from uh, the stands in the centre is Sandwit. Bravely and Mango Music the stand side. They're heading up towards the line. It's the near side. It's Mango Music and Paul Hannigan are in front as they race towards the line. Mango Music by a couple of lengths has won it. Argentine in second. Bravely third. They're all in Near side, and then Dispo Kylie might have been fourth, the first one on the far side. Mango Music, Paul Hannigan, seven to two favourite. Argentine, twelve to one, was second. Bravely was third at eleven to one. Same price, Dispo Kylie in fourth, and all nineteen ran. There was little doubt that the stand side were favoured. The first three at home were drawn eighteen, nineteen, and sixteen. I shouldn't detract from Mango Music's performance. He absolutely romped home, or she even romped home. Second start for Richard Fahey, and a step up to six furlongs might see her in even better light. Uh, fifth home was Sandwith, who raced all on his own in the centre, hung out there and did really well, while clear on the near side was Dispel Kylie. Uh, 3.20 saw just four line up. Golden Vale headed the market for this novice stakes at even money. They're off. Racing over a mile. They come away from the gates. The debutant of Southside Boy just shifted to his right in the early part of the race. He's the back marker. Cafe Electric is the first to lead them. To Golden Vales. It's uh, narrowly ahead of the grey and red jacket of Red Presence, who's against the rails. 
and a south side boy and the white and brown colours close up with those as they now come to the end of the back straight. They've completed two furlongs. Second favourite Cafe Electric has the lead by a little over one length. Golden Veil, the orange sleeve jacket, blue cap is narrowly in second place to Red Presence against the rails, Richard Kingscote in the grey and red jacket, and then just a length away still to a Southside boy at the rear of the field. They're moving then on towards the halfway stage in the home turn. Cafe Electric still has a slender advantage to Golden Vale, who's getting closer to the leader now. Red Presence a length and a half further back in third place, and then comes a Southside boy as they come down to the three marker. Cafe Electric continuing in front, but with the nose band, Golden Veil vale has come to draw level and perhaps take it up now. Red Presence is two lengths behind those in third position and a south side boy is a little outpaced. Cafe Electric's battling on well. Golden veil has got a big struggle long in her hands here. They're heading down towards the last furlong and Cafe Electric appears to have fought off. Golden Veil vale at the moment, she's hanging in second place. Red Presence against the rails is still in with a chance as well. And inside the last furlong, Cafe Electric in front. Red Presence in the grey and red jacket is in second place. Golden Golden Veil on the outside in third, but Cafe Electric, Seb Sanders has made all to win here by almost two lengths. Golden Veil is just going to hold second place to Red Presence in third, and they're clear from a south side boy. Cafe Electric, Seb Sanders, two to one. Golden Veil, the even money favourite, second, non runner two, and four ran. Golden Veil was uh, very well backed for the Fahi Hannigan team to take this but on official ratings she had something to find with both Cafe Electric and Red Presence and in, in, the, in the end having travelled up smoothly she just couldn't go through with it in the final furlong and a half as Cafe Electric having made most of the running stayed on in pretty doughty style under a typical vigorous Seb Sanders drive to win quite effectively. Mile Handicap was up next at 3.50 Arabian Spirit, uh, quite well supported, four to one, into threes. Sit lined up. They're off. A race away over a mile, hunting for treasure. Breaks Orkley from two and from fourteen. So Frank Wappert hasn't come out yet. He's about to be led out now. He's uh, miles behind. And as they begin their journey, Snow Bay is the first one to go on. The yellow and red jacket has got out fast from a high draw. Leads to Celtic Change and Keys of Cyprus, the green jacket behind these. Harriet's Girl, the dark blue colours against the rails from Arabian Spirit. And then comes Baron's Brook and Espiro in white and green. Faithful Ruler behind these. And they're followed by Vail de Plors and Antoniola in the black jacket with the white sleeves towards the rear of the field. Wig and Willie is just at the back with Wise Dennis also in the blue and white colours making their way on towards the home straight and the lead is with Snow Bay by almost two lengths to Celtic Change in second position and behind these Keys of Cyprus the green sleeves in third from Arabian Spirit in fourth position now moving ahead of Harriet's Girl behind these in the white sleeves against the rails is Baron Brook and then Antoniello towards the left, the extreme left now is Wise Dennis as they head down the home straight and as they do so Snow Bay still leading Celtic change with a red headgear coming to challenge Keys of Cyprus in the beige and green is there Arabian spread towards the left with a nose band further back behind that is Faithful Ruler then comes against the rails Baron Brook a Keys of Cyprus and Arabian spirit now as they head down to the closing stages they're coming to the last furlong and Arabian spirit has taken it up with Paul Hannigan Arabian spirit has gone on now Harriet's girl is out after it Keys of Cyprus is there veiled applause behind those but it's Arabian spirit now is heading towards the line, but Harriet Skirl is going to come and challenge on the line. Harriet Skirl has got up to win to Arabian Spirit. Veiled applause and Keys of Cyprus in a third of a third. Harriet Skirl, Andrew Elliott, seven to one. Arabian Spirit, the three to one favourite. Second, Veiled applause at sixteen to one. Third, nor fourteen ran. A good performance from Harriet's girl, who had run really well at Red Car, went up with a very strong pace on her previous outing. And on this occasion, Andrew Elliott was content to allow the well-backed Arabian spirit first run over a furlong out before producing Harriet's girl, who showed a, a really good turn of foot to get up in the closing stages and probably won a shade cleverly. She remains progressive and the runner-up is certainly due a win as well. Next up was the feature event on the card over a mile and a quarter. A very open market, lots backed. Jutland ended up favourite, seven to two. 
Veroff. A race away, placed her in the yellow jacket, missed it slightly, and early on, Northside Prince was the first of the runners to show, but others want to take him on, and Jutland has taken the lead. Green jacket, the red cap, Calder Crew in the pink in second place. And then Northside Prince in the orange on the outside of Playstra has now gone through into third place. She chases after the leading pair. Ben Coolin is back in fifth place with Pendragon and then European Dream, who's towards the inside of Mirrod, who's pulling fiercely in the light blue jacket for David Allen. So they race on towards the seven furlong marker. It's a two-length lead now for Jutland with Joe Fanning. A big white face of Calder Crew is in second place with Jamie Spencer, and Seb Sanders has got placed her after a tardy start into third place in the yellow colours. Then comes Northside Prince, PJ McDonald in orange on the outside of Michael Guerin on Ben Coolen in the white with the black sleeves. There's about a two-length gap behind these to Pen Dragon with the darker cap is on the outside of European Dream and mirrors a length and a half behind those. Heading now to the five marker, so halfway coming up, and it's Jutland who continues to have the advantage. Only now by three parts of a length as they bunch up a bit. Calder Crew in second place, Placer in third, Northside Prince in fourth, Ben Coolen and Pen Dragon are the next couple of runners as they come towards the last half mile. And then Mirrod, who once again has taken a bit of a hold on the outside of European Dream. Coming then down the straight, they're inside of the three marker, and it is still Jutland on the right with the green and red colours who shows in front. Calder Crew with a white face in second place. They've quickened a little bit now to back in third position, Northside Prince on the outside of Playstra. On the extreme left is Mirrod under pressure, and Calder Crew led at the two marker. Calder Crew is heading for home now, goes on to Jutland, Northside Prince in the orange, and then comes Penn Dragon trying to get on turn with place to record a crew in front, not finding a great deal. Here's Northside Prince now in the orange jacket. And on the far side is Jutland Pendragon in the white with a purple cap. Northside Prince is in front. Pendragon, though, is gaining with every stride. They're going to hit the line together very tight between Northside Prince and Pendragon, then place to record a crew. Pendragon, Philip Macon, 9 to 2. Northside Prince, second, 13 to 2. Placed her at 9 to 2, was third, and all eight ran. And this was fought out by a couple of admirable horses. Pendragon hadn't won until this year, but that's now his sixth win in 2010. And during the course of that, he's gone from a mark of 55 up to today's of 85. Uh, the seven-year-old is still progressive. Northside Prince was trying to complete a four-timer, also very much up in class, gave it his absolute best shot and was only mugged in the last stride. First division of a seven furlong handicap came up at 4.50. Legal Legacy headed the market at 7-2. They're off. A race away, seven furlongs in front of them here. They leave the gates review Princess from an outside draw also with George Benjamin getting across to Doyne. Uh, Deadly Secret and Slick Back Jack are the first two as they come to the end of the back straight. Then Commando Scott in fifth position, Green Jacket from Legal Legacy is just hidden from uh, our view by Fujin Dancer in the pink jacket. A couple of lengths behind these is Stellite, who's racing just in behind both of them, and Scrapper Smith is the back marker as they come midway round the turn. Slick back Jack with the stripes on the sleeves and cap is on the inside of Deadly Secret. They match strides as they come to the home turn on the last half mile. Review Princess with a red cap on the inside of George Benjamin in grey and black. Commando Scott in green and white is next. Legal Legacy, orange and white moving into sixth place and coming forward now. Fujin Dancer, both of them, and Scrapper Smith, the other runners, as they head down to the closing stages. And now Deadly Secret good has mastered slick back jack george uh, benjamin the gray and black colors coming there legal legacy pushed along in behind them review princess with a red cap making progress fujin dancer trying to get out but george benjamin has struck for home approaching the fellow marker legal legacy and review princess together second and third george benjamin now adrian nichols inside the last hundred yards review princess is closing him down though as they come towards the line review princess and david allen's Got to be George Benjamin, Commander Scott, and Legal Legacy. Review Princess, double for David Allen, 12 to 1, beat George Benjamin, also 12 to 1, into second. Commander Scott at 9 to 2 was third, non runner 10, and 10 ran. And yet another good finish. 
here on Thursday afternoon. Review Princess was having a 33rd career start. She'd never once tried beyond six furlongs, but on this evidence, she seemed to relish the step up to seven and seemed to need all of it in order to get to George Benjamin in the closing stages, which she did very readily despite wearing the headgear. George Benjamin back in handicaps, ran well and might well get his turn in a similar race. 520 was the second division of the seven furlong handicap. Uh, Lord Erin, seven to two market leader, plenty of support for others though. They're off. They get away seven furlongs is the trip as they come from the gates. Lord Aaron's one of the first runners to show. Cara's request to Grey in the blue and red jacket against the rails leads up Euston Square. Red and white jacket going on. The lighter grey Babise and then comes Glen Luigi and Dubai legend. Gio Jamal is outpaced. The Hermitage. Uh, Lord Erin, Daring Dream and Hans Somers are just in behind the leading group of runners as they begin the run on towards the home straight. Cara's request leads by about two to Euston Square in second place. The light blue of Glen Luigi in third. And then there comes the maroon and white jacket Burbese on the inside of Dubai Legend in the pink. Behind those Hans Somers, Daring Dream, the Hermitage and Lord Erin is on the left now with the orange sleeves are almost in line. Gio Jumali is the back marker. They're down the straight coming to the three marker and Cara's request going on strongly in front at the moment by three Lord Erin on the left the orange sleeves is trying to get after this leader but Beast the Grey is moving okay in behind Euston Square who still holds second place Glenn Luge is towards the inside Cara's request now can see the furlong pole but it's uh, just leading by a length and a half here's Lord Erin coming through now daring dream and Euston Square behind these two but Beast is next Lord Erin has taken it up now Lord Erin and Paul Hannigan's gone on to Cara's request who's about three parts of a length behind in second place and Lord Erin has won, goes on Daring Dream closing him down all the way to the line and then came Cara's request in third and Euston Square in fourth a Lord Erin double for Paul Hannigan, the 7-2 to two favourite. Daring Dream second, 9-2. to two. Cara's request at 5-1 to one was third, non-runner 8 and 10 ran. One or two hard luck stories here, but Hannigan kept it simple on Lord Erin, who'd shown a deal of promise on his belated return to action uh, last month and was always going to win once he took it up inside the final two furlongs. The runner-up, Daring Dream, didn't have the clearest of runs and didn't help himself by hanging. He also is better over a mile and he flashed home in pretty good style to close down on the winner but without ever suggesting that he was going to get past. And the final race on the card was a handicap over a mile and five. Despite a little late drift, Potemps Networks was an extremely well-backed favourite at three to one. They're off. They race away, then just about a circuit in front of them. Houston Dynamo is the slowest one away. Vitachi in the red sleeves and the green jacket of Odds Maker, and on the outside, the yellow and white Mohawk Ridge. They're keen to be the leaders. Northern Acres and then Potemps Networks in the red and white from the blue jacket of Silent Lucidity. Lombok is behind these from Dramatic Jewel as they head to the far side. Houston Dynamo is at the back of the field. Also Royal Straight, Pock, Fulham, Point, Darnak and Made of Weft to the back of the field with Chocolate Caramel. And they enter the far straight then, an odds maker in the green going on by a couple of lengths. Patachi, the red sleeve jacket in second, blue colours of silent lucidity is next, and then Mohawk Ridge in the yellow and black jacket, white sleeves. Potemps Networks, the red and white follows from Northern Acres in the blue and green colours as they head down the far side of the track and they're followed on the outside by Dramatic Jewel in the red Lombok and some company with the orange jacket of Hunter's Belt. Further back then Bolin Judith in the red jacket, white sleeves, black and yellow on the cap. The red and yellow of chocolate caramel is next and then Made of Weft in blue and white is nose banded against the rails. Pock Fulham, Royal Strait and Houston Dynamo, the back markers as they head now with just over three quarters of a mile to go. Still odds maker. Leading by about three, Batachi in second position, just being pushed along a little bit now. 
And then comes Mohawk Ridge, who runs the rails in third and just moving ahead of Silent Lucidity. And behind this is Northern Acres and Potemps Network together. Dramatic Jewel is next from Lombok. Then comes Hunter's Belt. Further back in the field is uh, Drop the Hammer up on the outside of uh, Bolin Judith, who's just being ridden along a little bit at this stage as they race on towards the home turn. Two lengths away, Chocolate Caramel. Poi Darnak is well behind. As also at this stage, as they come into the straight, is Royal Straight and then Made of Weft and uh, also well up the back is uh, Houston Dynamo. But they're coming into the straight now. Odds makers still leading, but now Silent Lucidity with the big cheek pieces is coming through into second place. The red and white of Potemps Network behind this. Vitanchi follows. And then comes Drop the Hammer towards the outside. He's making a little bit of progress. So is Bolin Judith. But Potemps Networks has taken it up. Potemps Networks is heading to the furlong pole under pressure but by two lengths to Oddsmaker in second place. And in behind these, Poi Darnak in the yellow coming up on the outside with a noseband. It's coming after the leader. Then Bolin Judith also. It's Potemps Networks now with 100 yards to go a three length lead. Poi Darnak though is trying to close him down. He's getting closer with every stride. But as they hit the line, Potemps Networks is in front and has held on to Poi Darnak. Then Bolin Judith behind those Oddsmaker in fourth. Potemps Networks, the three to one favourite, Graham Gibbons, uh, Poi Darnak, twelve to one second, Bolling Judith at nine to two third, and odds maker fourth, sixteen to one, all seventeen ran. There's no hiding place here after a ferocious pace set by Oddsmaker. Potemps Networks was always close up, was sent for home a long way out, travelling easily. It possibly a little too far out by Graham Gibbons, and in the end was fairly flat out. Nevertheless, is on the upgrade. The runner-up, Poi Darnak, was set an enormous amount to do, made up a great deal of it in the home straight, and was only beaten about a length. Uh, might well have won had the effort started earlier. A look at the winners. There were doubles for jockeys uh, David Allen on Another Citizen and Review Princess and title leader Paul Hannigan on Mango Music and Lord Erin. Feature event went to Pendragon, who's uh, been a revelation in 2010 and a good win for Harriet's Girl in the 350.